Once you leave the vault, you can never return, except from that one mission where you actually do. It's worth a buy, but I'm telling you, it will get boring. Don't buy New Vegas, please. Please don't buy New Vegas. <sighs> Next. Um, another one of my favourite PS3 games, but it's not one of my favourite games of all time. Easily one of the most gr graphically stunning games I've ever seen. Final Fantasy XIII. Well, <laughs> graphically, it's hard to find the words to describe it because it is just... It's easily, easily, next to God of War 3 and Heavy Rain, the most beautiful game I've ever played in my life. The new fighting system, I'm glad it's as good as it is because watching the videos I thought it would just be crap because obviously every other Final Fantasy game bar 11 and 12 in a sense had turn based action so you're basically used to that and that's what you expect but this, this I would think, I like to think that 13 has the best battle system ever musically, <laughs> musically in certain areas, stunning musical store stunning store? score? stunning everywhere else it's just it's not breathtaking, it's not it's not very new character wise Everyone's really cool. I don't see the point in Fang being there, except to fill in some gaps with Vinyl's backstory, but apart from that, I think they're useless. If the character isn't really revolutionary, except for Sats, because he's black, he's like probably the first black person I've ever seen in a Final Fantasy game. <clears throat> Pardon me. Um, but no character by any means is original. You've seen it all before, but there's certain points and features about them that do make them stand out compared to other people. Well worth a buy if you're a Final Fantasy fan. And what I like about this is that this is a great game, Final Fantasy wise, to get people hooked into the series. Because I've, I've lent out to one of my friends Final Fantasy X and twelve, and he hated both of them for, because he's a... well. 12 is understandable because that is shit, but 10? 10? Ah, gosh. That's stupid. But, yeah, for people like him, play 13, you probably love it. It's great, it's a good game. Um, next, um, probably won't spend long. Gratitude for 5 Prologue. One of the best graphics I've ever seen in my life. Great garage for a prologue game. Can't wait to buy 5. To import my garage. I wouldn't recommend anyone buy this, seeing how Grand Triple 5 is out, and this would be a pointless buy. Still a great game though. Guitar Hero World Tour bought it because it was £9. The song list is shit. Resistance Fall of Man, there's no point. <laughs> now, Infamous. One of my favourite games of all time. It is absolutely genius. It is genius. There is a lot of superhero games out there that follow superheroes that already exist. And every single one of them is shit bar one or two. This however, completely original take on the superhero genre. And a morale system that is surprisingly well thought out and it actually works for some reason. Cause when you, when you do good or bad things, you don't really get the sense at first that you're actually making a difference, but people really do react different around you. It's actually anything from crowding around you, attacking enemies for you and taking pictures of you to actually uh, physically abusing you in the street, which is fun. Uh, this is one of the very few games I don't get bored of. I finally platinumed it, thank God. Those pesky goddamn blast yards. This is such a good game. Can't wait for Infamous 2. This is a must buy. Must buy. Ratchet and Clank Quest for Booty. Had Tools of Destruction, traded it in, don't know why, haven't got crack in time, so I'm stuck in the middle. Fantastic though. Devil May Cry 4. Another one of my favourite games of all time. Because I'm a Devil May Cry fan. Um, using the front cover. I can sum up this game. 
because the cover's in two halves, virtually, with the characters, and the game's in two halves. The first half is you playing as an emo poof boy with a cool arm and useless sword. And the other half is you playing as a badass devil hunter with many, many cool weapons. That's about it, really. Worst Devil May Cry game, but certainly not a terrible game. It's worth a buy. Next, we have the absolutely invincible Metal Gear Solid 4 with sleeve. It's one of the greatest games I've ever played in my life. One of the best looking games I've ever seen. And one of the best acted out games ever. One of the best storylines. It's basically, one. it's just basically a timeless classic. And I'm so happy that it's only on the PS3. Because I couldn't give two shits about Ryzen because Ryzen's a poof and I hate him. I don't care how cool his cyborg suit is or how white his semen and blood is. I don't care how sharp his fucking sword is, he is still a poof. And a useless son of a bitch. He gets owned by Vamp. Vamp! Snakes like, physically, they, they got the body of a 77 year old man and he can still own Vamp. That just tells you how shit he is with all his acrobatics and cool slicing manoeuvres. All Snake does is just stabs him in the throat. Easy as peas. But yeah, if you do not buy this game, bar the reason that you actually don't like Metal Gear Solid, then you are making the biggest mistake of your life. It's a must buy, must play. Red Faction Guerrilla. Terrible game. The only good thing about the game is running around with a giant hammer, levelling buildings and people left, right and centre. I literally destroyed with just a hammer, a huge bridge, a bridge about this, a huge bridge that's about like 300 feet tall. I leveled that bitch with just a hammer. That is the greatest thing I've ever done in this game because it's so much fun. Um, it is. It's good to buy for stress relief because it's just pure destruction. Thanks to Warrior Six, way hey. It's fantastic. <laughs> it's really good. It's one of my favourite games of all time. Can't wait until Dynasty 7 comes out. Thank God that's a PS3 exclusive. It's just really great if you're a Dynasty fan. If you're not a Dynasty fan or got bored with Dynasty games by free, which is understandable, then don't buy it. But if you aren't bored with Dynasty Warriors, then buy it because it is just the same thing over and over again, but with more character and a better frame rate graphics. It's really fun though. Next, Lord of the Rings Conquest. If you're a Lord of the Rings nut like me, know virtually everything about Lord of the Rings, then it is a euphoric, twisty, frustrating melody of harassment, anger and, and pleasure at the same time because you love it because it's a Lord of the Rings game. But you hate it because how shit it is. And you love it because it takes elements out of Star Wars Battlefront. And you hate it because it doesn't execute them well. And you love it because it's got all the core mechanics to make a good Lord of the Rings game. But you hate it because every single character is shit. Every single voice acting is shit. Every single mechanic is shit. Every little bit of graphicness, graphicalness is shit. And, just in plain general, it is shit. But if you're a Lord of the Rings fan, you can look past all that and just say, Hey, I'm playing a Lord of the Rings game, I'm in heaven. That's why I still have this game. If I didn't love Lord of the Rings so much, I would have fucking set this on fire. Screw trading it, it's not even worth a pound. Oh god, here we go. Resi 5. Oh. Well... When, when I first bought this, I never actually paid attention to how shit it was because I was like, yeah, it's a new Resi game. I want to know the story so I could prepare myself for if there's a possible Resi 6. But after like completing it four or five times in Platinum, I'm like, it's one of the shittest games, shittest graphical game, and just 
plain old shit. It's just wash, one of the worst games I've ever played in my lifetime. Sheva Alamo. Easily the worst AI character I have ever seen in my lifetime. I hate her so much. I hate her to the point that I would punch a child in the face with an iron strapped to my hand because I hate her so much and I can't actually do it to her. Ugh. What's for by though? If you're a Resi fan and you haven't played this yet and you don't know the story. Yeah. Oh, second to last game. Thank God. Demon Souls. Only on PlayStation 3. It is fantastic. Easily great. What I like about this game is that graphically it's better than what I actually expected it to be. It's actually pretty, pretty nice. Pretty nice to look at. Characters and enemies are stunning for an RPG game on the PS3. They're absolutely stunning. But the environment, sort of, God, they're, they're terrible. Terrible, really. This game is easily the hardest game I've ever played in my life. Within the first 30 minutes of playing this game, I died six times. Um, but apart from that, I've now gotten into the game and I'm now used to the whole dying thing and spending my souls very, very carefully. Yeah, I've grew to love it. You have to give this game a chance. You have to have incredible patience to play this game. And you have to be in, into it and love it from the start. Because if you don't, then you never will love it or get into it. Because it won't ever grow on you. Ah, uh, yeah, and it needs to impress you within the first 10 minutes, or you won't ever play this again because it will just annoy you too much because of the dying. Because you do actually die so easily. But what I love about when you upgrade your stats is that every single stat, no matter what stat it is, even if you put up your magic skill, it puts up your physical defense <laughs> because the game knows you'll die in like one hit from like a rat or something, but. You know, it's nice to see that it wants to help you stay alive. Well worth a buy. It's one of the best games out there for the PS3. And last, and certainly not least, is the absolutely fabulous Just Cause 2. This game is just so much fun. So much fun. I have literally done two missions in this game and I'm having so much fun already because I don't actually do the missions I just drive around shoot people and um, and take over territories and find parts from my vehicles to upgrade them and parts from my weapons to upgrade them stuff like that unlock black market items causing chaos which is so good and it's graphically fantastic the island of Pinal is a dream location God, it's great. You just you just look out. I stand on a on a beach. Look out into the water. The skies are blue. The the sun's shining off the water. The sand is gold. And then, you, it's just absolutely breathtaking to look at. It. It's one of the best games I've ever played in my life. Um, voice acting is terrible. Cutscenes are terrible. Graphically, Rico's face is terrible, and other characters' these faces are terrible. But apart from that, it's visually stunning. It's not one of my favourite games of all time, but it's, it's, it's certainly a, a fantastically good game. That, overall, concludes my game collection, making in total 29, and counting because I have a huge list. Anyway, thanks for watching. Um, coming up next, straight after, is my Blu-ray collection, which is directly here. So, thanks again. See you all later.